Lockman test ACL injury. Lockman test is the most sensitive examination test for the ACL injury. The anterior crochet ligament is located in front of the knee. The primary function of the ACL is to resist anterior translation of the tibia relative to the femur and provide some rotational stability to the knee. Rupture of the ACL is a condition commonly seen in sports due to a non-contact pivoting injury. ACL rupture is usually complete rupture. Patient evaluation. The patient usually feels or hears a pop within the knee. Sudden knee pain and swelling within hours. Patient gives a history of the knee giving away. The exam is usually difficult and limited by the pain. There is usually hemorrhage within the knee joint and it is called hemoarthrosis. If aspiration of the knee shows hemoarthrosis, then there is a 75% chance of an ACL tear and a meniscal injury, usually the lateral meniscus. How do you examine the knee for an ACL tear? Lockman test is the most useful and sensitive test for the diagnosis of ACL tear in the acute setting. How do you perform the Lockman test? The patient should be lying supine and completely relaxed. Make sure that the patient's hip muscles, quadriceps, and hamstring muscles are all relaxed. Bend the knee to about 20 to 30 degrees. Stabilize the femur with one hand and with the other hand, Pull the tibia anteriorly and posteriorly against the femur. With an intact ACL, as the tibia is pulled forward, the examiner should feel an end point. The examiner should feel a firm end point. With an ACL rupture, the ACL will be lax and the examination will feel softer with no end point. The tibia can be pulled forward more than normal. This is the anterior translation of the tibia. A sense of increased movement and lack of a solid end point indicates an ACL injury. Lockman test is the best examination test to diagnose tear of the ACL. Be aware that the PCL tear may give posterior subluxation of the tibia and gives a false positive Lockman test. ACL injury grades using a Lockman test is seen in this table. Injury grade 1 you will see 3 to 5 mm translation. Injury grade 2, you will see 5 to 10 mm of translation. Injury grade 3, you will see more than 10 mm translation. In addition to assessing the amount of translation of the tibia and the quality of the end point of the Lockman exam, you need to examine the patellar tendon and quadriceps tendons because rupture of the ACL and rupture of these tendons may be confused with each other. Other tests may diagnose the ACL but they are not as good as the Lockman test. The anterior drawer test is not as reliable as the Lockman test. And the pivot shift test which is done by going from extension to flexion of the knee and the tibia will be reduced at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. That test measures the functional instability of the knee, the giving away. The pivot shift is pathognomonic for an ACL tear and is best demonstrated in a chronic setting.
It is a more difficult test than the Lachman. Rupture of the ACL causes anterolateral rotatory instability. The tibia moves anterolaterally in extension. However, when you flex the knee, the IT band becomes a flexor of the knee. The IT band pulls back and reduces the tibia. The pivot shift test goes from extension tibia sublux to flexion, with the tibia reduced by the iliotibial band. Both Lachman's test and the pivot shift test are associated with 20 to 30 degree of knee flexion. The Lachman test starts at 20 to 30 degree of flexion. With the pivot shift test, you feel the clunk at 20 to 30 degree of flexion. So it seems like 20 to 30 degree of flexion is important for the examination of the ACL. Usually the diagnosis of ACL rupture is confirmed with an MRI. In addition to the ACL tear, the MRI of the knee joint can show bone bruises or injuries that can be consistent with an ACL tear. These injuries are typically located at the middle of the femoral condyle and the posterior part of the tibia laterally. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.